let's talk. Let me make a little confession here. And all of my uh, all of my fellow court herald junkies out there can uh, lean in. You're going to find this interesting. I hate sitting down for court. After the, after a long day and usually eight or ten hours of running around, asking me to sit down, even in a comfortable chair, in a court is torture. It's like, no, I'm not doing it. And I've got a good chair. My wife and I have uh, these gorgeous hardwood medieval folding chairs that we'll take with us. And, um, you know, we'll set them up throughout the day. I'll sit in. They're gorgeous. They're, I love sitting in them. Mine's comfortable. It gives me plenty of back support. But at the end of the day, the idea of sitting in that thing for a long period of time, hour or more, when I am sore and I really need to be walking around or sitting in a different type of chair, no, I'm not doing it. I can't tell you how many times my wife has sat in court by herself. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, I'm telling you this for two reasons. One, I love the idea of raising the hackles of all of my court heraldry friends. Nothing personal, guys, just part of the game. Um, but also, I want my friends and you to understand that sitting down to court is not mandatory. Now, everyone who's currently making an angry reply to this, stop for a second, because I want you to go back and I want you to think about what I just said. I said sitting down for court. Let me be clear. I attend as many courts as I possibly can. And I do sit for a lot of them because a lot of them are morning courts or pop-up courts. And I'll usually uh, either sit on the ground or sit uh, on a... There's a couple of sites we've been to that have um, in, um, improvised seating you can use. Um, you know, that type of thing. And I, I, I try and make all those. But for the big evening courts, a lot of times you will see me on the edge of court, on the, you know, behind the seated audience or off to the sides, usually standing where I can hear the business of court. I can hear all the names. I can hear the crowns and the heralds talking. I can hear what award is being called out. I can hear all that, but also, also, I can walk around. I can stretch my legs. I can walk up to someone and have a whisper level conversation if I want to talk to them. If I feel like I've got some business of my own I need to take care of, I can usually find who I need to talk to while court's going on, while I'm still able to keep general track of what's going on. And I can go and be productive for me. Now, why am I saying this? Am I saying that no one has to sit down for court? No, my tactic really only works because I'm a minority in that respect and I kind of have the whole seated crowd to cover for me. But my purpose in this is not to say going to court is unimportant. I know there are people out there that are going to take this, take that takeaway away from this video and that's not the case. What I want you to understand is that going to court does not automatically mean you have to go in to the audience area and sit down and you are stuck there for the duration of court. That type of mindset, that type of thinking is what keeps people out of court. That's a type of thinking that keeps people, uh, you know, it'll keep half or three quarters um, or even, God, four-fifths of a site attendance from attending the evening court. And understand, evening court is almost always the big one. That is where usually the biggest awards are handed out, the biggest uh, announcements are made. 
that's where usually, with obviously some exceptions, but that's usually where the big things go down. Um, and you really should prioritize attending court. Court is important. But please, please don't get, oh, please don't get locked into this mindset of, okay, if I'm going to attend court, I have to wear my best court garb and I have to sit down in the middle of this block of people and sit there for all of court. Because you don't. You absolutely don't. Court has edges. It has the back area. Um, you absolutely can stand outside. Now understand, there's some situationality here. You have to be polite. If you are in a, a gymnasium or a large room or a large uh, chamber or hall, the slightest footstep or the slightest raised voice or even the slightest whispered voice may echo or carry so in those circumstances, you know, don't abuse your distance. Don't talk when there's a possibility of your voice being heard. But outdoors or in a, a, you know, a building you're familiar with where you know it'll eat your sound before it makes it to the audience, and go off to the sides, pace, get the, you know, get the energy out of your legs, roll your shoulders, get a chance to go talk with people, you know, Walk back a few dozen yards, grab a drink. Um, you know, you have a right. Going to court is important, but it should not be something you physically suffer through. And please, the other part of this, I know there's a bunch of people who think of this as lazy, slacker, have a whole bunch of, of very, very dismissive opinions of this. And to be sure, there are some people on the edges of court, on the back area of court, and behind the audience back, who are there because they honestly are lazy, but also understand there are a number of people for a number of very legitimate reasons for whom physically sitting still or physically staying in a chair for 45 minutes to an hour or two hours is torture. It is absolutely torture. Starting with, I mean, let's just get the stereotypes out of the way, starting with the kids. Telling an eight-year-old who normally can't sit still for more than 10 minutes, he's got to sit through court, is begging for a fight. Telling a 16-year-old who normally can't sit still for 10 minutes that he has to sit through court is begging for a scene. And also it's teaching them that, that propriety, the tradition is in a hobby is more important than their comfort and their considerations. That's not a tradition we want to set. That's not a lesson we want to teach. There are also people who have physical handicaps. And I don't just mean bad knees, bad hips, wheelchair or motorized assistance bound. Those obviously are valid handicaps. But I'm a good example. I'm huge. I am six foot two and a half. And we're not going to discuss my weight, but it's not a small number. Sitting for prolonged periods of time without the ability to move around causes my legs to start to go numb. It, it's extremely uncomfortable. I've actually been to events where I was so tired I did sit for a very long time in a chair that wasn't meant to distribute the weight properly. And someone called my, they called my name urgently, something was wrong. And I went to pop up and I got to my feet. And only after I was up there did I realize I was numb from the upper thigh down to my toes. And yes, someone should have called Timber because my, I stood up and the momentum that carried me up, I topped out and went, and I became emergency number two that night. I was fine, but <laughs> six foot two is a long way down when, you, when you're the one covering it. Um... Also, let's not dismiss um, very legitimate uh, psychological, neurological, and physiological considerations. Sitting in a crowd is not pleasant for people. There are a number of people for whom that can trigger anxiety or panic attacks. It can just cause a general blood pressure spike. It can affect, it, we can document, we, I mean, this is not even hypothetical here. We can document that anxiety can affect your body's chemistry to a level where it can cause blood sugar issues. It can cause um, anger management issues. 
And that's not that uncommon. I actually had to read up on that for a friend. We were trying to sort something out. He'd been told by uh, his doctor. And, like, no, no. If it, Him not eating properly and not getting enough water in his system was actually causing, like, chemical balances in his brain where it was triggering an aggressor reaction with him. That's why he was getting a temper for something he was doing. Who'd have thunk it? Like, seriously. These are all real. These are all valid. And all of these become an issue when we tell people, you really should go to court. I don't care how uncomfortable you are. You know, it's not a big deal. Just go sit in that chair. Subtext, in the middle of 55, 65 people, all sitting shoulder to shoulder in narrow rows, possibly at night with poor lighting, which is very uncomfortable for some people. Imagine, imagine being a, uh, again, let's just tap into one of the, the more classic scenarios. Imagine being a young lady at your first or second event and you're sitting, you know, by happenstance, you sit down and all of a sudden you're bracketed in by three or four guys my size. Again, I'm six foot two and a half. I'm huge. And I'm not even that big by some SCA standards. Having three or four guys my size wind up in a cluster, that's not even uncommon. Telling someone they got to go to court when that's already happened to them once, huh. And they may not have friends that they can sit with. There may not be someone they're comfortable sitting with to assuage that concern after having a first experience like that. My purpose for this is, is that, yes, we absolutely should attend court. And I'll talk about the why court is important another time. But when we say go to court, it's very important that we impress upon everyone that going to court does not automatically mean you are locked into the audience. You have to sit in this seat. You can't move. You are, you know, you have to be this good little student. And you're at the mercy of two people sitting up at the top and how long they want to talk for. Court in the SCA, and especially in Ansteora, is a whole lot more versatile than that, is a whole lot more forgiving than that, and it offers us options, and it is very important. Number one, that you and I, you and I, remember those options for our own sanity, for our own health, and we need to remember that the second or third sentence when we're talking with someone else about, hey, we, you need to go to court, is, yeah, you can stand in the back, it's not a big deal. Yeah, you can stand off to the side, it's not a big deal. You know, you can... You can pull up your own chair and your own table and sit off to the side. We have room to, you know, sit back, put your feet up, enjoy the sound show. You know, you have options is what I need you to remember. Because every time we say go to court, if someone thinks, oh my God, I'm going to be locked into this chair, which is only comfortable for the first 20 minutes with two huge people on each side of me. Yeah, we're begging to not have them go to court, which is the opposite of what we want. It's not quite a hot button topic for me, but it's definitely something I wanted to talk about. So, what's your experiences with court? I hope they're all good, but I, <laughs> I'm neither that optimistic nor that naive. Tell me about it. What's happened to you in court? What's, what's happened? And this is aside from the getting called up. What's happened to you as an audience member? Um, what are some tricks you've learned? What are some rules that you've encountered? How do other kingdoms handle this? I've been to a couple of courts, mostly on Steorin, but also uh, Calentieri, uh, Meridian, um, Glenavon. I've, I've uh, been had pleasure of uh, been in a Glenavon court once. Amazing, amazing places, all with their own traditions and so forth. What about yours? You've got a whole bunch of other kingdoms. What else is going on out there? What's it like for you being an audience member in court, and how do you deal with the tradition of, i got to go to court, but I really don't want to sit in that environment? Tell me. Tell me. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, I'll see you at the next event. Goodbye. God bless.